This is Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia Murder here, and you're listening to the Ever Black Podcast. Hey, human scum, this is odorous from Quark. We're going to the Battle Fear Factory. This is George Quark, Commander Fisher. This is Jasmine Delegat. This is Wade from Our Last Enemy. This is Mike Nixon, Cool Battle 17. He is at Wednesday 13. This is Bruce Allen. This is Rex from Club Devil Hill. This is Gary Boone from Sepultura, and you're listening to Ever Black Podcast. Before we go into this episode of the Ever Black Podcast, we just need to give a shout out to our show supporters, the Occult Clothing Brand Electric, which love amazing apparel from shirts to hoodies to hats to beanies, dresses and more. Check out their full range at electricwitch.com.au and put in the code EVERBLACK for 20% off your order. Also, don't forget to subscribe, rate and review the Ever Black Podcast on Spotify and iTunes podcast streams and see all our video interviews on the Ever Black YouTube channel. You can also read all our articles and reviews at everblack.com.au. All right, on with the show. Luke, thanks so much for joining us on the show, brother. Yeah, not a problem. Thanks very much for having me. It's good to be here. No worries, buddy. No worries. Well, uh, of course, uh, the debut growth album, The Smothering Arms of Mercy, has just been released, and it's incredible, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, for me personally, oh, it ticks yeah. all the boxes uh, musically. Awesome. Uh, to be honest, man, it, it seems like you guys have just really hit a nerve with a lot of people, and the response so awesome. far has been in- incredible. Like it's everywhere, man. That's like great. Pop up in my news feed. Yeah, that's awesome. Shared. Have you have you noticed that yourself? Um, yeah, I, I'd certainly. Uh, I think we we had a discussion coming into this around, like I guess, our expectation of of what we could possibly hope to see from people once we show this kind of thing to them, and none of us could come up with a real solid conclusion about this because we all knew we were speaking to things that. Um, you know, that, that alienated us, that mm-hmm. sort of that were speaking to uh, experiences that, that, that kept us individually feeling separate from other people. Um, and, and so we weren't sure if, uh, you know, this, this would come across as, as like a, what we've been looking to do with it or whether it would just be considered like a cacophony of noise. Um, so I just had this image in my head of like, uh, you know, like, People seeing it as just like a busload full of people falling off the side of a cliff and they're all really mad about it inside and that's what the sound is. And I was kind of like, if, if we can get that kind of vibe of like, all right, well, this is angry. It's like, well, that's a start, you know, but it's 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 really, really uh, exciting to see how people have just really leaned into it and it's clicked in, in, in so many ways. And I'm just very excited about that because it, it, it uh, offers a lot of promising um I guess implications for for what we can be doing with this 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 whole thing to uh, be helping people. Absolutely, it's really powerful stuff, man. Like really, really, and you know, it's it's uh, of course it's the first part in a trilogy, I believe, that deals with yeah. mental illness and and lyrically and conceptually, this album is, is very personal to you. Was that, yeah. that a hard process for you to go through? You know, putting it all out there and laying it out. On yeah, oh, it was. Um, a lot of the lyrics were sort of brought out uh, while I was, um, well, the fragments, the, the, I guess, the fence posts that sort of um, made, I guess, the backbone of the album, really, the narrative, uh, were all uh, pulled together from fragments um, that that's, I'd sort of been writing while um, sections in, in, in a psych ward and then while in intensive uh, mental health care uh, myself. So I, I sort of leaned on those experiences and then and then tried to to broaden them and i guess that that probably made it a bit uh i guess a bit more pragmatic to get it out that way than to for it to all just be pure self-disclosure um because i guess the the it it is a painful thing and especially if if you've gone through life um expressing these things and having had them sort of, you know, people be confronted, affronted or, or offended by, by you, know, you speaking to your experience about things, um, you learn to be pretty reticent by nature. Um, I'm pretty reticent by nature. So this is a bit of a, a bit of a reach uh, for me to sort of really uh, to put it out there. Um, the first couple of months of, of, of tracking it was, uh, was, was thoroughly exhausting and pretty painful. Um, and I learned a lot about, I guess, uh, the, the, the 
the relationship that we have with implicit uh, trauma as well about, uh, you know, there, there's, there's things that we can remember, um, but there's things sitting behind that and there's things yeah. sitting under that and slightly to the left of that. And all these things are all pretty hungry too. So if you start, you know, reaching your hand into their cage, they'll go for the bite too. So there was, there was a lot of that kind of thing happening there too. So it was illuminating uh, because it's sort of, because of that exact thing, uh, it was it was showing me there were bits that uh, maybe I thought were gone, but uh, there's there's still some ghosts hanging around. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like overall, I think it's been very positive. I think it's it's a very uh, valuable way to get things out is 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 through I guess that writing and then like just writing it writing things out enough that you're no longer uh, necessarily hooked to the word as it's coming out. It's not going to have that, that, that amplifying and magnifying effect on you. Um, it remains to be seen. We still haven't played a show yet. So it remains to be seen what will, will happen with that once I actually have to start yelling these things to people. Um, but feeling optimistic about that. So. That's awesome, bro. That's, that's so good. Have you found that it's helped you, you know, confronting those things lyrically has, has helped you move on from some of those things and 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 uh, well, heal a little bit. Yeah, there's there's nature hates a vacuum, and so um, and we 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 hate the idea of a vacuum in our own uh, reasoning or, or or memory or experience. So this has been a really good chance to offer context and and cause. Um, like foment a sense of value to some of these things that were just straight up chaotic um, that, that are being referred to some of these things that uh, had no value, no reason. There was nothing to it. There was no happy ending. Uh, there was certainly no uh, escape rope. Um, so it's offering, I guess, uh, a, a foundation of utility to those things because it's like, all right, well now that in itself um, in that, in, you know, either in isolation or the, in the vacuum that, that left behind the why, how um, it now has a why it now has a how it's, it's, it's uh, tilted towards, um, you know, I guess the substance of these experiences is now uh, being used as fuel towards uh illuminating a, a solid path of recovery um, for people to be able to, I guess, dip into, dip out of as they see fit um, and, and uh, connect with it as is their prerogative. Um, and the bonus is that we get to put blast beats in there too. So, yeah. <laughs> Man, I'm going to say, fun. it's, I, I feel that it's uh, probably one of the most important records of this year, if not the last oh, few years. Thank you very much. No, it's to be serious. I mean, seriously, I feel like mm. music and film, you know, mental illness is always fictionalized and exaggerated in certain ways and not talked about in mm. a serious way or given that respect that it deserves. You know, was that a factor? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah well, it's, it's absolutely been. Uh, We've, we've, we've been very much fed a lie as to what it looks like, as to what it does to people, as to what impact it has on people. Um, and and we, these, there are so many stigmas that still remain um, around these things. I mean, the, uh, the, the diagnosis that I had for the longest time for me, um, I was cleared of it in 2018 after about like five years years of really hard work on it um was uh borderline personality disorder now the the, sti the stigma around these things is is uh quite colossal you considered like it's the the jealous ex-girlfriend disease it's the alanis morissette disease it's 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 all these like very uh, reductive and, and cartoonish kind of things that's what i mean um yeah and and yeah, that that that's uh, well. It makes you feel like lesser. It makes you feel like a fucking cartoon. Um, and I think that when uh, there was there was a, a decision that I had to be doing something about this once I actually I went to the, the the psychiatric team to get my diagnosis cleared because I said that they said I'd be all good for it. 
yes. uh, the outsource to another person who wasn't on my usual team. I came into it and see him and said, here's what the deal is. Here's all my reports and everything. Um, so uh, we, we just, we need your opinion. What do you think? Do we keep this uh, little, these three little letters attached to my name that mean I don't get to do a lot of things. It means I need to get, you know, like ridiculous checks for all kinds of things that I want to be doing in life. And he's taken one look at it and he's taken a look at me. He's gone, yeah, of course. I'm like, oh, great, fantastic. He's like, yeah, like borderline's a women's disease. You're a man. I'm like, oh, <laughs> okay. Um, borderline personality disorder, uh, for those playing at home, of course, is a, yeah. it's an attachment-based disorder um, caused by uh, chronic uh, traumas um, and instability. Um, it's based on conditional attachment. You are only worthwhile if you did X, Y, Z. Um, it, it fosters a huge amount of different symptoms uh, at the heart of it all, I think, is sitting is a lack of identity and a fear of abandonment. Um, I think those things can be experienced by all people across all spectrums of the human you know, yeah. experience. So um, speaking to those parts has been very, very useful. And I think, yeah, definitely that, that cartoonish thing you're talking about too, about the, uh, our idea of what a crazy person is. You know, it's like it, it's, it started off as the, you know, the ball guy from Disturbed album covers and then it, it, it turned into like, you know, Heath Ledger Joker. And it's always, it's always That's been this, yeah, it's always been this thing of like, oh, you know, let's make him crazy. Yeah, let's slap his face a bunch yep. and like maybe you can do like a creepy smile or something like that. And that's crazy. It's like, no, 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 no. Um, I, I, you know, I spend a lot of time um, working, like I work in this field. I work in mental health now. And I, I don't think I've ever seen anyone do any of those things. I've seen some oh. really, really extreme shit. Yeah, but yeah. I've never seen anyone do any of that kooky shit. So... <laughs> It doesn't look like anything like that. So I think there's the, the, there needs to be a whole new conversation around these things. Really. Absolutely. And not just about parallel talking and talking to, oh, I had this happen. Oh, I had this happen. So no, no, well, let's talk about that spiral up. Returning from that, the Trent Reznor downward spiral, we're moving upwards now. Yeah, that's it's, it. It's uh, fucking way harder and way scarier. And uh, it's got so many pointy corners and sharp edges and pitfalls. We need to talk about it. Yeah. That's why I think this album is very, very important. And I think what oh. you're doing is more, it's it's bigger than the music, dude. And it's, you know what yeah. I mean? It's yeah. such a, I mean, I'm not, I, I just think it's it's such a special thing that you boy, what you boys are doing that it's, mm. have you had people contact you in the meantime, man? Like, have you had, had people since it's dropped say that it's helped them or it, it's, you know help them on their, their, think, their own journey? I think that um, it's still, I think it's still very early days. And I guess what we're looking to achieve with that, I guess, or my, my, my take on it is um, that, well, language, music is a language. Um, it's, it's, as Billy Bragg puts it, it's, it's the, the, the language of empathy, you know, empathy being the currency of music. What are we really trying to create here? Um, so with this first, with Smothering Arms of Mercy, with this first section of the trilogy, it's very much about the despair, the collapse and the, the, the ruin, mm -hmm. um, that comes from just your, your brain slowly, you know, falling to pieces um, through things that seem outside of your control, outside of your grasp, um, or too heavy or too colossal. Um, so the, the, the subsequent releases will be exploring uh, that, that sort of rugged journey upwards, um, moving towards triumph and completeness. Um, it might even sound completely different by that point too. I think we're willing to really try to illustrate things uh, accurately with the music. Um, but... Yeah, I think that at this stage I would be I would be a little concerned if 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 people were looking to it as like this album was the thing to carry me out because um, what I want from them is like if this connects with you, if you feel like there's a shorthand between you and what's being said, um, that's that's the start. That's not the end. Um, we can't leave it at that. 
because we feel pathos in that moment. We feel mm. a lot of endorphins. We feel some really, really strong feelings. And sometimes that feels like healing, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a start, it's a validation. And that's what you're probably feeling at that point is, is like, okay, like I, I feel met. Um, if, if things are talking about this discussion, this is the, if this is a novel thing, I haven't really seen this before, then I feel met in this. So, um, yeah, I think that if people are listening to it and they really dig it, um, then uh, let's 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 all keep in touch because we're looking to create some. Uh, we've got some tools uh, we want to be bringing out for people. Um, free things to use. We're not going to be doing uh, anything fancy with that. We're just going to get them out there. Things around how to ground yourself. Uh, we we want to be discussing about the points where uh, the body takes over the minds on so many of these aspects. And how to bring yourself back to to, to base with that too, um, and that's I think where the real good work is going to get to start is, is is that conversation. And hearing about you say all this makes it makes the band name itself. It, it's yeah, is that where it came from? The band name growth. It's about that. It's it it kind of happened natively. So Tristan came up with the name um, while. He, he, he was on his own sort of dragon slaying journeys himself. He was up mm -hmm. in Iceland. Uh, he said he came up with it basically. He was jamming on guitar um, at the back of a cabin in Iceland that he was staying at and just watching all the yeah. volcanoes um, create newness. You know, they were, they were yeah. erupting and flowing everywhere and, and creating whole new continents and stuff. And he was just sort of looking at that and saying that's – that's what I, that's where I want to be, you know, not in the lava, but I want to be, you know, tilting towards newness and, and, and yeah. life and, and, and connection. Um, and so he was, he, he'd been doing this stuff uh, on, on his side of things um, very parallel um, to where I was at. We only really met up until um, a lot of these things had already been created individually. We were just focusing on coalescing them for a number of years. You... So on my end, I think that uh, to, that that growth is um, my idea of it is the growth is 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 relentless, um, and it happens entirely of its own will. Often, if you don't uh, recognize it, it'll keep happening. Um, it can be a sunflower, it can be a relationship, it can be a tumor, it can be rust, it can be malignant. Um, so it but whatever it is it's 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 one of the most powerful fucking forces out there because it just doesn't stop like uh, jeff goldblum and jurassic park says you know it always <laughs> finds a way so that's it um you can you can definitely we'll, we'll, we'll try and sublimate the samples of him doing that weird jurassic park laugh into the next album just to keep that easter egg going <laughs> <laughs> exactly. if anyone doesn't know what i mean they need to watch jurassic park again no man yeah that's the right. remix yeah. <laughs> yeah. talking about samples there is a sample that in the album that, that keeps jumping yeah. um it's One. the yeah. the woman screaming i'm lonely and it hurts me is that where, where's that yeah from? that's heavy dude. uh that is a documentary i would like if if you ever want to see how things were um within our lifetimes mm. um certainly within our parents lifetimes um, how things were with regards to mental health. Uh, Children of Darkness, it's a documentary. I think it's available on YouTube now, has been for a while. Um, that covers, I guess, the treatment in um, insecure, uh, like inpatient uh, asylums. I think they were still calling them asylums. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a real eye-opener because it's uh it, it's a painful watch um because it shows the, these people were treated like cattle in in like the, their their treatments involved um gaslighting them you know like uh, or, or like getting them all wound up and then um un, until they uh have a meltdown or flip and then bring in the punitive force of oh this is why you got to stay in here that kind of thing. So there, there was a lot of that. And I think the other thing that really struck me with that documentary is that a, lot, a bunch of people that were in there weren't even sick. They were neurodivergent. Mm. Um, very big difference. There's a huge difference between someone that is, is, has, a, has a disorder or someone that is not 
or like, or like a personality disorder or someone that has like a psychotic illness and, and someone who is experiencing life on the autism spectrum. There's an entirely, they're, they're, they're two separate things, mm. um, but they were getting treated uh, just as one and the same. You're not like us. You're broken. There you go. Let's, 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 let's just uh, poke you with needles and see what happens. Um, we've moved a lot more towards autonomy and, and, and a focus on self-efficacy in mental health since. Um, and there is, you know, there are far more options for having yourself heard within that. Um, but I wanted to highlight that sample. We all agreed on that sample in particular out of a few of them because mm. that was a treatment session. That was her in group therapy being ordered to say that over and over again until the truth of it hit her and then it made her distraught. Um, it speaks really to, again, that stigma, um, which goes on both ends, goes on both ways. Um, there's, there's stigma from people towards mental illness. They're afraid of it. They're afraid of people that have it. Yes. Um, and then, and then there's the people with it and their entire existence is, is, is fear and not wanting to go get treatment because you think you're going to get just like, you know, again, locked in a room. Um, and, and given one of those kind of treatments or like some type of, if it's not a real lobotomy, if you, you're fearing like some type of figurative lobotomy, whether it's a social one or whatever, you know, bringing this up means, oh, like, boom, they're, they're, they're considered subhuman. They're lesser. So, yeah, we've, we've, we've kept that one in there. Um, Children of Darkness is, is well I'm on YouTube. It's a heavy watch. Um, if you... Uh, have the wherewithal then it's it's uh certainly a a, a real eye opener man I'll, I'll have to check that out i mean it's something that's as i said i think what you guys are doing is very important um as as confronting as it as it is i mean mental illness is something that's within my family that uh mm. I, I don't talk to a, a lot of people about but you know going it's, right back to yeah. when they treated people that way um, with mm. my family as well, you know, I've heard all the stories. Yeah. Um, so it's it, it it seems to it's, it's there's a lot more compassion within within the treatments and stuff these days as well. Yeah, there there, there is there is. Um, that that being said, like it's still terrifying to uh, be in in, in involved. Uh, in it as like from that I guess patient end or consumer end they're, they're usually they're, they're changing the names of what the person at the end of this is getting called all the time because it never never quite sits right you know are you a client are you a patient are you a yeah, consumer yeah. are you one of it, it, regardless you always feel like something hooked them to the end of a tube in some way um, so it, yeah it, it takes an enormous amount of courage um, to be able to address it for yourself or even so yes to speak to it within within your own family um yes. and it's it, because i think that there's there's a rule hidden in the uh hidden in our minds um like the veggies and pasta sauce you know like a little nasty little rule though this rule is that um you know you you have to be this and you, you can't be separate to this. You can't be experiencing anything other than this. And if you are, then you have to get back to just being productive as quickly as possible because that's what matters. Your worth yeah. is based on, <laughs> on what you can put out there. Um, so, yeah, there's a dreadful amount of pressure around just, just, just keeping silent about it. But it's one of our main killers. Yes. Um, it's, it's not just in terms of, of you know, suicide and people uh completing that um it's it's it comes out in all those lateral ways like every thing about every time that someone's reacted in anger or every time that someone's um distracted themselves from uh the things that they value they become a workaholic or whatever because they're, they're, they're they've been tiptoeing around this this massive hole filled with teeth in the middle of the room and, and they're just refusing to, um, to, to 
utter its name would be a slight against their name. Yeah. You know? so that's uh, it's dangerous and it leeches out and it, it's, it's, it's killing us in so many ways. Um, right down to, to the, the, the spiritual death of, of culture, you know. Absolutely. No, I totally agree, man. Um, mm. with, with the album cover, though, how does that tie into the mm. concept of this as well? Because that, that, that's stunning. Mm. Like, yeah, so Tristan started drawing that uh, with his... With his uh, it took a long time. He, he, was, like, he, he was painstakingly working on that with pencils, charcoals, um, etc. It's all hand done. That's cool. Which is uh, the bit that... Uh, flips people out a bit but like that so all the yeah. artwork is done by Kristen and he does it all um you know by hand um I think the idea being that uh it's a fairly labyrinthine and abstracted design um but it's I think mean, it's 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 hard to see just from the front cover but there is a lot of references to the human form in there we're going to be continuing with that the idea being uh, you know, we, we are pretty labyrinthine ourselves. We have all kinds of thoughts, memories, secrets, um, things that we keep and we, we, we sort of branch them off into all these different things. Um, and I guess the, the way I always envisioned an ultimate like sense of recovery, if we were to, to put it, if we had a you know, billion dollars and wanted to make the best uh, art installation about it, um, my idea would basically be it's like a gigantic anthropomorphic human form. Uh, the entire inside of it looks like uh, the inside the lament configuration from Hellraiser 2. Um, and you, you, you're trying to climb your way back up to the top. Mm. So that's that's the kind of image that we that, that, that is, I've got in mind for this of, of, of where I want people to be thinking of this. You know, you, you, you're that. crawling yeah. out of yourself. So, yeah. I definitely got that that labyrinth. The the mm. man. That's, hey, that's hey. I was thinking that. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Finding your way out of your own self. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it, man. That's that's really really cool. Um, and of course, I mean, uh, you've been involved in many projects over the years. All you boys have. Yeah, a few. With the other. Yeah, the state. yeah. Hey, we're, you know, we're all, we're all in busy boys. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. legendary stuff i mean yeah with your work with you know jack the stripper and uh, you've toured the world and and done some really cool stuff bro yeah i haven't toured the I haven't toured the u.s yet which is um at, at the moment probably good yeah yeah. Uh, yeah yeah it's yeah, not, no. not not a place for many people uh not a place for visitors at the moment um yeah like yeah we, we we've all had our sort of uh, we've had a lot of adventures with these things and, and and learned a lot through just sheer trial and error and catastrophic mistake and all all kinds of things um and it's it's been fun actually sort of like well, when we started working together on this stuff we pretty much got straight to work on it we didn't really uh you know we, we were meeting up for the purposeful thing of like all right well we're tracking we're tracking let's let, we're not gonna necessarily go into like every fun story and all that kind of thing yeah um but i'm starting to hear some of the stories now now that we've got a little bit more time to like like just oh, stretch out and relax and like let's talk some shit <laughs> um and, and we'll start swapping some some stories from from the road from back in the day it's like man these are naughty guys so <laughs> <laughs> they, do, they do they do silly pranks and all kinds of fun shit so it's gonna be really good to uh get get back out on the road when there is a road again um yeah. and and stuff being an incredible annoyance to every other artist on every other <laughs> lineup or festival or whatever um we're the worst you don't want to sit with us we're really fucking annoying <laughs> that's the one thing i've learned from this but that's uh, exciting stuff man that's that's where all the cool stories come from i mean i mean uh, you've done europe yeah that's where i'd love to go man you know yeah, uh, yeah europe's incredible um i think you you I found myself walking a lot more carefully in Europe because I was scared to break things because everything just seems so much older. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like, well, you know, I don't know. Um, if, if, if you're walking through, say, like, uh, what, Cheltenham in Victoria or whatever, and it's all suburbs and whatever, it's like, oh, I don't know, really, whatever. But, <laughs> yeah. yeah, going through these places is like, once you, I guess, once you get into a new country, you, you, yeah. you're already um, 
automatically probably going to have a better time with it and be able to pay attention to more things because the parts of your brain that are responsible for new tasks light up your striatum and all that kind of shit. So it's like, oh man, like this, this part of my brain is hungry to get out of bed at 5.30 and like just go for a run around town and see what there is. Yeah. Oh my God, 7-Eleven. Yeah. <laughs> like it, it, it starts with that, but then you can go into like, there's just really wild experiences where you just don't know what, what, how the fuck you got there or then, then what is going on. Um, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be aiming to cause less property damage during shows with this, with growth, I think, because um, <laughs> that was a, a most of the top of my head is scar tissue now. So oh. <laughs> yeah, there's a whole I bunch mean, of little divots. It's all, it's all, man, you've had some pretty cool adventures over the years. That's yeah, for sure. That's fun. Yeah, man. Well, that's that's, that's what life's meant to be about. That's right. It's, it's, it's meant to be about adventures. You want to, you want to sort of like uh, slide into the coffin sideways, sparks flying. Kind of deal. <laughs> that's it, man. That's it. And so, uh, yeah, the, the, that's. Uh, I'm really hoping that we, I guess the the best bit about all this would be like, and what I'm hoping for is is that uh, if people can sort of really start to to make the decision, I'm going to pull through. I'm going to I'm going to be me. I'm going to complete this. It's going to be fucking scary. It's it's not good. I don't like me as I am. I'm going to build someone. I'm going to become them. Um, and then I'm going to do some really fucking dumb shit. And I'm going to email Luke about it and be like, Hey, I just accidentally burned down the Eiffel tower on tour. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, <laughs> sick. Awesome. Man. Uh, what we want. She'll be right. She'll be right. As we just say, antenna anyway. Fuck yeah, it. That's yeah. it. <laughs> it's made out of metal. I'm metal. Yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Dude. That's, that's awesome. I, I really hope to see you guys up here as well. I mean, things are starting oh. to calm down a little bit. Just, just a little yeah. bit, but uh, man, yeah, it's it's uh, yeah, the I've I've been screaming for years that there there really was sort of no normal and that we've been heading like the, there's a, there's a momentum that we've been tilting towards that that is uh very very unsustainable so um and that 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 momentum has still uh been keeping up its pace so let's just uh we'll we'll, we'll play it by ear. Um, but I'm very excited to be getting back. I think we'll be all back next year. Yeah, I think they so. got the vaccines getting rolled out in the UK as we speak. Like there's there's uh, there's two vaccines. There's all kinds of uh, positive things moving forward. I'm just hoping that when we come back into these things, that uh, people will take some time to consider some, I guess, meta ideas about how to connect, how to express, how how to how to support themselves and other people because we're all feeling pretty hostile right now um things have been outside of our control for too long and that makes yeah. people feel hostile that's what humans do um and it's very 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 cathartic to punish people with that um as soon as they look at you sideways um it but I guess there, there's, there's, there, there is that, that uh, anger is pain management in a way. It's an analgesic. So, uh, yeah, leaning into these things, if people could uh, think less about the things that, uh, that they're angry about, per se, or being told to be angry about, and more about what that anger is, is, is smoke screening, mm. then I predict we'll probably you know, have more of a normal normal a lot sooner. Um, yeah, there's a lot of elephants in the room at the moment <laughs> with a lot of different uh, networks and communities. So we all need mm. to uh, band together, that's for sure, man. And look after yeah, each other, yeah. and you know, and and take some of that aggression out into the microphone because you know yeah, what, man, it's the best feeling in the world. Aggression, yeah, absolutely. Well, aggression can be very, very healthy. Mm. Um, there's there's the different definite threshold for that. Um, yeah, I think just uh, getting in touch with your values at this point in time is the best thing anyone could be doing, really. That's like, right. while, while everything's slowly starting to roll back into shit, this is an essential time to get back into what are my values, what are they going to be, um, what have they been, um, because you got to lean on them when all this shit is going to be. It's going to be really tricky. All these people that, that, that are still 
uh, even when you, especially when you're trying to be the best version of yourself and, and, and trying to be the nice, you know, person that shows equanimity and patience and you just seeing none of it reflected, it's going to be even harder. Mm. So yeah. you got to really find the value in those things and, and, and lean on them and say, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm being, uh, patience and, and forgiving with the people I'm around um, and the people on the internet and whatever. <laughs> That's the hardest uh, part. Not, not, because, not because I yeah. think that they're great or whatever, but yeah. because I value uh, peace. Yes. And I understand that they're coming from a place of fear and anger. Um, it's not mine. Um, but I can see it. Uh, they can have that, you know. It's, it's their prerogative to deal with that. I'm going to value peace instead. I'm going to go look at a dog. Yeah. That's it. Be excellent to each other, as Bill and Ted would say. Absolutely. You got to do yeah. man. But uh, actually, yeah. the, the th- thinking about that, that was, that's, that's the, uh, I put up a little thing on my Facebook a little bit ago, like a little bit of uh, the dumb trivia and the long reach around these things. So, uh, the Bill and Ted universe. Um, so, Everyone's been talking about all these things get added into universes, right? The Bill and Ted, the, the Super, uh, Super Smash Brothers, all these kind of things. So um, I, I am arguing now that I'm in the Bill and Ted universe, um, not because uh, of this project per se, yeah. but because I accidentally punched Toast in the Bus in the arm at a festival once and he wrote the soundtrack for the new Bill and Ted. So I'm in the universe, so I get to say the quote of be excellent to each other. It's actually my intellectual property. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> PayPal details will be right here. Yeah, Ben Momi, <laughs> peasants. <laughs> That's the new Bill and Ted slogan. <laughs> I like it on T-shirts mm. with uh, yeah. Keanu Reeves. Like. Yeah. yeah, sick. <laughs> new slogan for a new world, Ben Momi, peasants. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> brother it's been awesome hanging out with you on the show and i, I definitely appreciate you very much, it yeah. man it's been it's been awesome uh of Thank course you. on a brutal stormy night i don't know how it is down there but uh it's all oh, it's, it's yeah it's been pretty uh pretty like early emperor album covery over here too <laughs> yeah. i'm into it i like yeah, it i'm like hoping it. for the dissection storm and the lights bane section tomorrow because then it'll be a snow day and i might not have to go to work so uh, <laughs> yeah well, it's hot as fuck right. here, so we'll see how we go. But, um, <laughs> dude, uh, of course, uh, the new growth album, The Smothering Arms of Mercy, is out now everywhere. As I always say, the links will be down here in the, the comments section. Everyone go get it. If you haven't got it, what are you doing? Because it's amazing. It's one of the best albums of this year. Not just saying I got that. Stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get it. Just get it. Right. That's how yeah. we go. It's, it's amazing. Nice. But I, I mean, that's incredible. And uh, much love to you and the boys. And get your asses up here to Queensland. Nice. We've got some uh, brutals to do. Doing our best. We'll make it there as yeah. soon as we can. We'll see you soon.